Hello, hello there and welcome back to War Thunder. So today I have for you the first impressions on the new Soviet Premium Destroyer at battle rating 4.7, the Project 41 Neustadashimi. And this is a crazy good gunboat and I had kind of a lot of fun playing this. Although I cannot really 100% recommend this ship and that is because it sees a lot of uh, game modes and maps that do not really suit it. The queue times are long and there is no guarantee that Gaijin will nerf it in the future or the meta will change and that it will become even more obsolete and also it's not a premium cruiser so currently uh, the Soviets have no rank 5 ship. Um, so there is no real need to uh, have a premium cruiser but on the other hand the thing is once there will be a rank 5 cruiser there will be a rank 4 premium cruiser to research that with and so then it loses a lot of its value currently it's good for researching the Sverdlov and probably also the other cruisers and it is significantly better than the Project 7U Stroini and I have some numbers to prove this. So currently as you can see I'm shooting actually a German heavy cruiser and I'm using the second of three actually available shell types. Before we go into this I think this is a huge huge benefit for naval forces to have actively for your main batteries and also your secondaries if they have it um, the third shell tab available and I still am going into how many shells you need of which kind I need to test the waters quite literally also if there is a little bit of a sound delay and it is uh, wobbly at times the servers, the server ham hamsters have not been fed by Gaijin in a while and also, well, then there is uh, German internet as well. And then my PC also isn't really recording um, to 100% perfection despite restarting constantly uh, new uh, drivers, etc. So there are certain quality issues. And well, the thing is here, as you can see, I'm doing kind of a little bit of damage here and there and I'm aiming for the barbettes of the turrets as I can actually penetrate them with the sap shell. More in this in a moment. And yeah, there I got an ammo rack detonation on an Admiral Hipper. I was in a preferable situation. If you think that this is a fluke, no, watch this. There is an Empton, also relatively short range, 5000 meters, and just watch the damage, watch the crew counter. We had 34% crew, 29 now, so with every salvo, like what? 5% crew of a cruiser, 15%. We're hitting here the smoke funnels, the compartments, uh, the engine room, we penetrate the citadel, we're going through the turtle back and there is another cruiser kill. And the only reason why this Soviet cruiser survives is because I'm running out of sap. So I should use more of this, which is also very, very good versus American destroyers. Okay, enough with the excitement. Let's go into what makes this ship so good. And we're starting with the main armament. We have four 130mm slash 58 SM21 cannons with 1000 rounds overall in two twin turrets, one forward, one aft. And then we have uh, as a backup weaponry, which is also very important, four quadruple 45mm slash 89 SM20 ZIF automatic cannons with 32,000 rounds of ammunition. In addition, we have then 10 533mm 5339 torpedoes. And then we also have, for good measure, some RBU 2500 mortars, 96 rockets in them. So that is really great. And uh, to make here it into a nutshell, this destroyer, when it comes to the armament, its handling and its effectiveness combines practically the alpha strike of some Soviet ships, some Soviet destroyers, with the handling and performance and anti-aircraft capabilities of some American destroyers. So literally the best of both worlds, minus the armor, sadly. So the ship is fragile, but it is crazy effective. And if you have to jump on somebody at close quarters, you're really dealing a lot of damage really quickly. Now watch the 45 millimeters here versus another destroyer. And initially it's just one of the quadruple turrets and just watch the crew number ticking down. It is really dirty. It is really good. And it is also not really short range. It's up to what, three, four kilometers 
I've hit and destroyed ships at four and a half kilometers with the destroyer secondaries. High rate of fire, high shell density and good alpha strike. The only minus is they have no armor piercing but the sheer volume of fire, well it just speaks for itself. Again here another customer with a single uh, quadruple 45 millimeter, uh, there is just no hope for this guy. And uh, then also the anti-aircraft capabilities are very good with the uh, fast turret traverse which is unsoviet like. Then also the decent DPM. And I think, you know what, let's go through it. So first of all, let's talk about the DPM here. How many shells you can throw in the air. And uh, you have here a reload of 4 seconds for the 130mm. Usually all the other Soviet destroyers have 6 seconds reload. With the exception of the Tashkent, which has then 5 second reload. So the DPM leader is here the Tashkent with 72 rounds per minute. Then the Neustroshimi is second with 60 rounds. Third place goes to the Leningrad with 50 shells per minute. And the Project 7 Stroini has 40 rounds per minute of DPM. So you can see that is the other premium destroyer. Uh, that is a significant advantage and all the other destroyers don't have those crazy secondaries right so this is really really good now let's talk about the main battery shells here because they're also really interesting and as you can see we have three different shell types and uh, we have also in battle now three different shell types thanks to a more than mandatory change by Gaijin so the normal if you will stock and free a 130mm OF 42HE shell has a mass velocity, like all the other two shells, of 950 meters per second. That is really, really fast. Then the TNT equivalent is 3.83 kilograms, so just under 4 kilograms. That is some of the heaviest alpha strike per shell that a destroyer can deliver. The only rival is the German Z32, aka the Navic destroyer, with the 150mm guns. 37 millimeters of penetration and this is the shell for the majority of work versus destroyers and patrol boats then versus cruisers as you could see in the intro clip versus the admiral hipper there is the 130 millimeter pb42 sap round aka a sap cbc round summer armor piercing cat ballistic cap shell Again, 950 meters per second mass velocity. The TNT equivalent bursting charge is 2.21 kilograms. That is 20% more bursting charge in the semi armor piercing shell than the German destroyers with their 128 millimeter shells have in their HE shell. So, this explains the damage. And then the penetration at 1000 meters is 203 millimeters and at 5000 meters it's still 146 millimeters. So this was the reason why I could deal even with those cruisers. If I was sitting behind the island in an advantageous position and they gave me full broadside and they were concentrating on somebody else. But technically the ship can do it. Then the reason why I don't use here the... Uh, 130 millimeter ZS42 RHEVT, the high explosive variable time fuse shell, aka the proximity fuse shell, versus uh, destroyers, is because it has a slightly reduced bursting charge. Again, this time 955 meters per second, and we have a bursting charge of a mere 3 kilograms. That is more than 20% less bursting charge, and that is quote unquote a mere 35 millimeters of penetration. But versus aircraft, this is really it. This is really dealing the damage. Again, the combination of radar, the elevation angle, and the quick turret rotation speed, which is very unsoviet like, results in this ship being crazy good versus um, planes in close quarters versus other destroyers, patrol boats, and with the summer armor piercing shell, even versus cruisers. This ship leaves nothing to be left desired. Then we have the torpedoes, the 5339s, of which we have 10 in two uh, quintuple launchers. Now, with the torpedo mode active, you have then a range of 10 kilometers with a speed of 63 kilometers per hour. So that is a medium range and it's really not that fast. Without the torpedo mod, uh, so more or less in stock configuration on other ships, you have a mere four kilometer range 
but therefore 94 kilometers per hour speed. So that is quite something. And then for good measure, we have the before mentioned rocket launchers, the RBU 2500 motors. They have overall 96 rockets with a mass of 84 kilograms, a maximum speed of 260 meters per second. And you actually can reach some enemy targets, especially in close quarters. And they have an explosive mass of 25.8 kilograms. So this is like in theory, really hard hitting. But when I actually tested it, it was not really that satisfying and I would have dealt more damage with the main batteries just like that beautiful beautiful you don't you don't sneak up on me in that ship so as you can see this is the final battle and i absolutely love this ship but there are some problems so first of all um this ship is really really fragile um, it has no armor unlike some uh, some american destroyers um the battle rating of 4.7 means a lot of up tiers versus cruisers and also the encounter mode, which I absolutely despise for destroyers, which is great for cruisers, but I don't see a point with destroyers dueling it with uh, cruisers, where it has, um, you know, objectively speaking, no chance whatsoever. Then this is not a premium cruiser, as I said. Um, so this is um, just a destroyer that Gaijin throws in before they will introduce probably with the next patch then a premium cruiser because then there will be the first uh, Soviet uh, rank 5 cruiser. So please keep this in mind. Um, if you really want to wait for that to happen, then just simply wait for the upcoming premium cruiser. That was the best battle that I had. It was again close quarters sitting behind the island, ambushing enemies, having the chunk jump on them you could see the dpm from the main guns the anti-aircraft capabilities and also the crazy performance of the 45 millimeters so the terror of the sea award together with the survivor for seven ship kills two aircraft kills one cap 71,000 civil lines and just under 10,000 vehicle research points so that's a decent result but again the income in naval forces is not the greatest that's it for me today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, give it a subscribe if you want to see more. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this ship and how it is to fight against it, to fight with it. And as usual, we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.